Hello, welcome to our newsroom for having the news in details. Following the appointment of the Somali Prime Minister, Mr. Robley Mohamed Hussein, by the President of the Federal Republic of Somalia, Mohamed Abdullahi Formajo, Jaburi Prime Minister Bilghadi Kamil Mohamed today sent a message of congratulation to his Somali counterparts. In his message, Prime Minister Bilghadi Kamil Mohamed wished the new Prime Minister every success in his mission to lead the Somali government to create a new, uh, a new area of prosperity, happiness and progress for the sister nation of Somalia. At the same time, the Djibouti Prime Minister assured the new Prime Minister of his country's support as usual reconstruction and pacification of Somalia. Now, the Minister of Health, Mr. Mohamed Orsa Medhiri, accompanied by the Ministry of National Education and Vocational Training, Mr. Mustafa Mohamed Mahmoud, the Minister of Equipment and Transport, Mr. Mosa Mohamed Ahmed, the uh, Minister of Labor in Charge of Administration Reform, Mr. Usman Ibrahim Roble, and the Planning, Reconstruction, Environment and Tourism Minister, Mr. Mohamed Abdul Ghadir Musa Halim, uh, laid the foundation for the Asaela Center Health Conversion Project to a modern Level 2 clinic. Upon their arrival in Asaela district, he was received by the Sultan of Gobah district, Mr. Uh, Habib Mohamed Boko, and members of parliament and local authorities. It is considered a project to transform uh, the Asaela Health Center into a high level 2 health center and is part of the government's policies of achieving universal health coverage and improving the quality of health services in rural areas. The Minister of Health, Mr. Mohamed Orsa Medhiri, also confirmed that the clinic will uh, provide every uh, medical services to the population. He expressed his thanks and gratitude to the people of his district for the warm welcome and hospitality. Under the high patronage of the Islamic Affairs, Culture and Endowment Waqf Properties Ministers, Mr. Mohamed Hassan Barry, the French Ambassador to Djibouti, Mr. Arnaud Guillois, and the French Institute of Djibouti. The launch of the open day entitled Vive Djibouti at the Institute took place this morning. This program, supervised by the cultural institution of two countries, inaugurates the new cultural year of the French Institute in Djibouti and is a powerful platform for expressing uh, the existing cultural cooperation between Djibouti and France. The occasion began with a visit to numerous exhibitions that reflect the wealth of artistic and cultural creativity in Djibouti, in addition to craft and opportunity to discover the beauty of the country's cultural and natural sites, as well as a book reading exhibition and drawing session for children. The cultural and artistic Spartan event brought together directors and technical advisors of the Ministry of Culture in addition to guests from the country's cultural and artistic world and officials from the French Institute of Djibouti, headed by the director of the Institute. More than 300 people attended the event and the closing ceremony saw the open day with Djiboutian and French officials visiting the showroom. Djiboutian artists gave various performances embodying the cultural richness of our country. The ceremony was distinguished pardon, by a speech delivered by the French ambassador where he expressed his joy at this opportunity which represents cultural reunification at the French Institute of Djibouti. For his part, the Minister of Islamic Affairs, Culture and Waqf Properties, Mr. Mohamed Hassan Abarari, welcomed the cultural cooperation between the two countries and also highlighted the main cultural points of, these, of his ministry. The hi uh, the highlight the main, uh, to highlight the main pardon, lines of cooperation, he announced the opening of the cultural event entitled Viv Djibouti and thanked the organizer of, his, of this open day as well as the artists who participated in this event. 
Now under the auspices of the State Secretary for Youth and Sport, the Djibouti Football Federation to the official launch the Regional League for the 2020-2021 season in Obok. The State Secretary for Youth and Sport, Mr. Hassan Mohamed Kamil, and his accompanying delegation were warmly welcomed by the regional authorities, including the Prefect of the region. The event began with a presentation for the youth of uh, the uh, participant on this occasion. Then the Super League, uh, the Super Cup, fa fa pardon, final took place in the presence of the uh, State Secretary for Youth and uh, Sport and the uh, President of the Distribution for the Football Federation, Mr. Suleiman Hassan Babri, and his closest collaborators. The second edition of the five kilometer competition took place yesterday affiliated to the Nasib complex to the AOG uh, Foundation, more precisely in the women's uh, multi sport complex. This event brought together the parents of the uh, players and civil society who provide daily support to the young athletes of this neighborhood. Among the different sport competition that took place in the complex, there was a five kilometer competition, a football match, and a five kilometer walk organized by the women of the Nasib complex dedicated to uh, the first lady, Mrs. Khadra Mohammed Haid. At the end of these competitions, various cups and sports equipment were distributed under the auspices of the uh, IOJ uh, Foundation. This annual event reflects the population desire to make a sport an active social element in the fight against criminality among young people. In response to a call from the Djibouti Ministry of Agriculture to combat the locust infestation in Djibouti, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO, in cooperation with the Ministry of Agriculture, is preparing training sessions for trainers on how to stop the spread of locusts. The courses uh, aim to build the capacity of trainees on how to control and really manage the locust crisis and how to significantly reduce the devastating effect of the invasion by an international expert experienced in locust control. Approximately 27 trainees participated in the workshop, including five coordinators working for the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations in the interior region of the country. Many managers and technicians from the Ministry of Agriculture and interior regions where these trainers will in turn train their colleagues at the regional level. The agro-personal losses in Djibouti after the invasion are estimated at $6.5 million and the damage in the sixth region of Arta, Dikhil, al sabih Tajura, Obok and outskirts of Djibouti city at $8 million. Now WFP uh, organized a workshop on a new technique for seasonal livelihood programming for the uh, people of the al sabih region from uh, 13 to 17 September in al sabih this planning tool uh, that brings together local needs and experiences aims to improve the identification of needs, coordination, and implementation of multi-sectoral program. The closing ceremony of the five-day workshop was attended by uh, Vice President of the Region Council, Mr. Noor Saeed Gildo. Now, with great sadness, we inform uh, you the death of uh, Mr. Hassan Noor Alale, who uh, died yesterday in England and brother of the uh, talented artist Abdinur, uh, Abdinur Alal and uh, the deceased was born in 1960, leaving uh, behind a widow, five children and five grandchildren. With his great loss, we ask uh, God Allah that the deceased be blessed with his mercy and that his family and loved ones inspire patience and comfort. Moving on to international news in South Africa. 
South Africa is particularly pardon, impacted. The country launched a national testing campaign was Tuesday. Health measures have also been strengthened. Egypt, Morocco, Ethiopia, and Nigeria are also among the most affected countries. The African Center for Disease Control and Prevention reported on Friday a million and three hundred and seventy-nine confirmed cases of COVID-19 on the continent, a million one hundred thirty-one hundred recoveries, and thirty-three thousand deaths. Several countries have already are uh, the or are considering uh, reopening their borders despite this at the risk of causing an intermisking of population that could encourage the spread of the virus. Experts are concerned about this. There is currently no resurgence of the COVID-19 epidemic in Africa. Nevertheless, the health system of Africa, African countries are fragile and could have great difficulty in managing a possible significant outbreak of infections. This is it for this edition of 9pm. Thank you for watching us and have a wonderful evening.